For this video, I'll walk you through how to create custom web components with ripple effect. And I'll also show you how to use inheritance to create button variations. Support the channel by liking or commenting on this video. Subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. Now let's dive in. I have set up a blank TypeScript project. My index file is basic with a single link to the button TypeScript file, which is empty for now. First, I'll install Kuko to help me build web components the easiest way and without having to build anything. Then I'll run my project with npm run local. To create a web component button, I'll import Kuko and get web component class. I'll create a button base class that extends web component. Then I'll extend this button base class to finally create my web component, which I'll then register. In Kuko, base class is known as the abstract component which is a component that is only meant to be extended and not used as component in your application. So why do this? Well, with a base component, you will avoid repeating code, which will be common among component types. Since button is a type of component which has many variations, this technique will save us from repeating code. Let me show you what I mean. Buttons can have various attributes, right? I picked these as the most common, but there could be more. I also included radius control as this is almost always desired in buttons and it defaults to three pixels for this example. For the template of this component, I'll simply render a button where I use curly braces to data bind the type attribute value. Then I'll add a slot with label as backup. What this means is that when I use my button HTML tag, anything I placed inside that tag will be placed here where this slot tag is. And if nothing is placed inside my button tag, it will use whatever the value of label attribute, which defaults to empty string if not available. I'll use Kuko attribute director to conditionally set the disable attribute only if the disable value is truthy and do the same thing for out of focus. And that's how base button. For the style of our button, I'll start by declaring the style sheet, which will be a style tag where I'll first target the host, AKA actual component tag to make it inline block because all web component tags are inline tags by default. Box size border box and use square bracket CSS data binding to set the value of the pointer events based on the disable attribute value. So if the button tag has the disable attribute, it will set pointer events to none to prevent any clicks otherwise out of. Then everything inside a component will be box size border box as well. I already have a style for our button. I'll paste here and walk you through it some padding according to the body base value. I use square brackets to inject a radios attribute value directly in CSS, capitalized text, some space between letters and one RAM font size. Again, change opacity according to the disable attribute value. These CSS data binding are nice because you don't have to create classes to add to a tag based on a value change. Position relative for the ripple effect later on, remove default browser button appearance style. Pointer cursor, no outline, which we can set the component delegates focus option to true to make up for it. Two pixels transparent solid border, which will come super handy later for the ripples. And to make it so when we define border, the button text doesn't switch. No overflow, default black text on light gray background with some transition for background color, which will change on hover. And for when we hover the button, the background is a nice extra light gray. Just like that, I have shown you how you can create a base button that you can change into anything you want later on. I'll show you that in a minute, but first let's take this for a ride. In my HTML file, I'll simply set my BFS button with my button text inside and check the browser to see the amazing great button. If I inspect it, we can see the style tag and our button tag. Now, what if I want a primary button, for example? Normally, you have a button which you specify a variant attribute value, which changes the color of the button. The problem with that is that if you keep overloading the button with the attribute options, your button will grow in size, meaning that even when you are not using the other options, you are shipping the entire button code. So with Kuko, all I have to do is create a new component class. For example, I'll create a primary button class that extends our button base. And inside, I'll first extend the button base style to inherit all its look and then declare this button on style, where all I do is change it to black background and white text with a dark gray on hover. With my new button register, I can try it on the page and like that, I have a whole new button type. 
By following this model, I can change or override anything from a base component, the template, the style, a method, a property value, etc. This allows me to separate logic per component types in an easier way to maintain the growth of my component over time. I'll follow the same idea to create an outline button with no background, black text, and border box. Try it out on a page and see my outline button. I can also create a ghost, aka text button as well with no background and just a dark text. Again, try it on a page and see something new. Finally, go for a CTA button with purple color. Like that, I have a new button look as well. Component inheritance is a way to extend a component, but you can also use composition or component wrapping. Inherent is a more powerful solution which allows you to save code and override particular parts of the component. But it can come with a cost if you misuse it or don't plan out your components well ahead. Now, let's say I want to add a new feature to all these components, like a ripple effect for when it's clicked. First, I'll get a reference of the button with using Kuko Ref Directive and it will be under BTN name. Next, I'll add a span tag, which will be our ripple with both ripple as class and reference name. I'll first add a ripple method, which takes a mouse event. And on the button, I'll attach a click event, which calls the ripple method with the event object. The dollar sign event is a special Google context property, which will hold a reference to the event object. All element reference can be accessed via the dollar sign refs property. And because I am using TypeScript, I'll add type to it here so it does not scream at me when I access its keys. I'll tell it that ripple will be a span element and btn will be a button element. Now here in the ripple method, I'll get ripple and button from refs. And if their reference exists, I'll first remove the ripple span tag from the DOM, then use the button to get the diameter, which will be its larger side. Then divide this diameter by two to get the radius and then set the ripple span tag width and height to be the same as the diameter and position it according to where the mouse click event happened, minus button offset plus the radius. Finally, append the span tags inside the button again. The reason I removed and append the span tag ripple tag is to trigger the CSS animation because CSS animation starts as soon as the element is attached to the DOM. And speaking of CSS animation, the CSS for this ripple span tag will be to position it absolute, which by default will be top left zero, rounded by 50% radio since the width and height will always be the same, scale it to zero with semi-transparent white background, then animate it for 600 milliseconds linearly, and the animation will take it to opacity zero and four times scale. Feel free to play with this style to fit your project. Now, when I go to the browser and try it out, we can see the ripple effect for when we click the buttons, which is super cool. Now, what if I don't want some of these buttons to have the ripple effect? Well, I will add a allow ripple property, which by default would be true. And I'll use Kuko with if directive to only render the ripple span tag if ripple is set to true, which means that if it is set to false, no span tag will be added to the DOM and no reference to it will exist. And since we checked the ripple element reference beforehand, nothing will happen. Now, whenever I want to turn it off for a specific button, I'll simply set this property to false. When we try it on the browser, we can see that all buttons ripple on click with the exception of CTA button. Now for the final touch, I'll put all these buttons inside a div tag, then duplicate it under, adding margin to the div, then adding radius of 3 RAM to the bottom buttons. Like that, I just created pill buttons for you. You're welcome. Check the source code link below. Let me know what you think in the comments or like this video to support the channel. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on anything. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.